Good morning, everybody. Can you see me? Uh, let me, yeah, there we go. <laughs> didn't didn't want to hide behind anything. Well, you might not be able to see me back there. Yeah, don't, don't tell my wife. Nobody tell my wife. I'm a little fluffy. So. I told her it was an allergic reaction to taking the trash out. Don't think she bought it, but that's okay. So, um, so we're going we're gonna to do things a little differently today. I'm going to speak. So the look of abject fear, terror in my kids' faces and my wife's face is hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's worth everything. So um, one of the things I want to do first is uh, give you a safety briefing. I was in the military. Every time you, before a mission, you get a safety briefing. Anytime you're going to do something dangerous, safety briefing. So I want to give you all a safety briefing. Um, first of all, anything I say is not necessarily the thoughts or words of this church or <laughs> Pastor Jeff. So I get that disclaimer out there, so don't hold anything against him. At the end of this, I still want to have a pastor, so we'll say that. Um, objects and mirror appear closer than they are. In the event of a water landing, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. I kind of like that one, you know, because last time I got on a 747, I didn't see pontoons on the wheels. You're not landing on the water. It's a crash. Call it what it is. Um, but anyway, that's your safety briefing. You've all had your safety briefing. I can sign off on that. Katie's shaking her head already. Um, so I've told you many times, there's two things I do very well, grow hair and sweat. So don't get alarmed if I start dripping up here. I'm not going to have a coronary. I've been cleared by my doctor. So I'll, you know, occasionally wipe the sweat away. We'll, we'll all be good, right? So no worries. Don't, don't let that concern you. So um, <clears throat> I'm not going to do all fun and games. The pastor was kind of worried. He said he didn't know if this was going to be a roast or a sermon or what. Somewhere in between. <laughs> we might roast you a little bit. No, I'm not going to roast you. Uh, you've been roasted enough, so I won't do that. Um, but we're going to uh, start off. I want to give you the uh, Cliff's Notes version of the Bible. How many of you are familiar with Cliff's Notes? You went to high school, didn't want to read the book. You do the Cliff's Notes. So hopefully you haven't done that with the Bible, but let me give you the Cliff's Notes of the Bible. So we'll start with the first verse, Genesis 1.1. Oh, hang on a second. I've got to be able to read this. One of the problems of getting older. So let me put my uh, reading glasses on. Sorry, wrong glasses. Okay. Um, so Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's pretty much all you need to know. Everything you see, God created. Do me a favor. I want you all to close your eyes. Now, now, Jamie's not closing her eyes. I, I can see you. I, I have bad eyesight, but I can tell if you've got your eyes closed. Don't worry. I don't have a water gun or a watermelon. I'm not about to hit you with anything. You can relax. Now, open your eyes. Now, what did you see? Okay, for, first of all, before I say this, what did you see? If you have high blood pressure, discount the stars, halos, and whirly gigs. Those don't count. If you're uh, fluffy like me, discard the cheesesteaks and the chicken wings. Those don't count. That's not what you saw. What did you see when you closed your eyes? Nothing. The Bible starts, there was nothing. Nothing. First verse, first chapter, God created everything. All you need to know. If you look to your left, you look to your right, you look up, you look down. God created it. Thank you, Darlene. She actually did it. <laughs> Simon says. I forgot, sorry. Anyway, everything you need to know right off the start. I love how that works. Because everything else after that is based off of that one simple fact. Everything else after that, based off of that. Okay, so Cliff's Notes, right? Everybody turn to Revelations. We're going straight to 22, verses 18 to 21. 
And uh, I'm going to use the uh, New International Version only because my tongue gets caught in my teeth when I try to read the King James Version. Um, I love the King James Version as long as I'm reading it and not speaking it. Otherwise, it just sounds like I have a mouthful of marbles or I've had uh, a bad reaction to peanut butter. <laughs> so, um, so at, in Revelations, and this is the last set of verses, it says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And if anyone takes away from the scrolls of prophecy, God will take away from that person any shares of the tree of life in the holy city, which is described in the scroll. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of God, Lord Jesus, be with God's people. Amen. Everything you need to know. First chapter, last chapter. First verse, last verse. Okay, that's it. We can leave. We're good. No problem. I'm getting a little sweaty. Let me uh, help myself out here. All right. Hello there. Okay, I'm getting a lot sweaty. Okay. Never make the mistake of asking your wife to bring you a bag. I ask for a bag, she brings me her bag. I love carrying her around a quilted backpack. Not quite the manly luggage I was looking for, dear. Um, anyway, moving forward, um, I want to talk about uh, one other verse. I don't have a lot of verses in here. I like to have fun. I want you to have fun, but I want you to remember key things. We've already covered the beginning and the end. Now let's go right into the middle, and we'll have this covered. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and uh, we're going to start with verse 4. I got an assistant, yes. <laughs> All righty. He's, he's less nervous than I am. He's fine. I've had small children. He's good there. If he's comfortable, I'm comfortable. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, now I don't have a sidekick. I thought he was up here for moral support. I really appreciated that. Gee whiz. Alrighty, where was I? Oh, 2 Timothy. Um, 2 Timothy says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4 says, I charge thee therefore before God and Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, out of season. See, I told you. I don't know what it is. King James Version, I just lose my tongue. I don't know what's going on with that. In season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts they shall heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, and they shall turn away from the earth to the turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables, turned unto fables. But watch thou in all, thy th all things, endure affliction, do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now the NIV version has this a little bit easier for us to read and understand, but, so I'm going to actually use that as my sample. But I like to refer to the King James Version because it's where most of us all started. Um, so in this, um, we are all... It doesn't say pastors. It doesn't say one particular person or one group of people. It's for all of us. We're all called to be able 
to spread the word of God, to spread the news of Jesus in season and out of season. What does that mean? Does that mean, uh, you know, during uh, strawberry picking time and not strawberry picking time? No. We're prepared, we need to be prepared at all times to spread the word of God, even when we're not feeling our best. A lot of times we have a challenge with that. Um, you know, a lot of people out there like to use the uh, international symbol for you're the world's number one driver when they're in traffic and somebody cuts you off. That, you know, in season and out of season, when people are doing you wrong and when people were doing you right, are you prepared to spread the word of God? You know, I'm thankful that we have three pastors who have answered that call, who, in spite of having a successful business or having a, a tremendous education, they chose to be pastors because they could have very easily stuck with the professions that they had. Now, Pastor Luis had his own business in his home country. Pastor Keith, Pastor Jeff have educations for jobs that would give them way more money than they make as pastors. And yet they chose to set that all aside to say, I am called to spread the word of God and I'm going to do that. So I, I applaud them. They're, you know, they're, we talk about heroes. We talk about firefighters and policemen and first responders and they are incredible people and I applaud them. We have one in the house here today and a retired one. And... Uh, Another one who's a volunteer, I thank you for that. I thank you for putting your life on the line for us. Some people who appreciate it and a lot of people who don't, unfortunately. But I hope that the people who do appreciate it outweigh those that don't. But pastors fall into that same boat for me because they're not doing this job to make tons of money. Um, the true good pastors aren't doing this job for fame and fortune. There are some people out there who carry the title of pastor who uh, are looking to make a lot of money and get their name in lights. We don't have three guys like that. We have three people who have chosen to serve this community and serve this church. This is a small church. And uh, I think of a song that I hear on the radio a lot of times when I'm driving to work. If you're ever driving beside me or behind me, watch out because that's a lot of times when I do my uh, Meditation and thought, and sometimes I'm not sure I'm actually paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, have, uh, have the radio tuned to a Christian station, and I hear this song called Dream Small that says, you don't have to go for the big stuff. You don't have to have the big bank account, the big car, the big house. You know, do the small things for people. Whatever you're doing, whatever gift God has given you, use that. And I've talked about that throughout the month as we talk about pastor appreciation, God has given each of us our own talent. Some of us are comfortable with uh, singing. Some of us play music. Some of us can bake and cook. Some of us can uh, write poetry. Some of us are really just good at talking to people, at praying for people. Uh, some people like to be up front. Some people like to be in the back. Right, Keith? Keith Housel hates being up front. I love it when rangers have to be up front because he hates that. <laughs> Gets him out of his shell. But um, if, if God made all of us to be the same way, and we talked about Carl playing, you know, if I could play like Carl, I wouldn't be as much of a fan of Carl if I could play like that. But because I can't play like that, that makes me appreciate what he can do with his fingers so much better. I'm lucky if I can get a key in the lock to get the door open. And he's up here tickling the keys and making beautiful music. That, that to me is something I appreciate because I don't have that talent. And I'm thankful to God that he gave Carl that talent for us. I'm thankful to the worship team. You know, we talked about uh, if I was going to sing. You don't want that. No, no, no. Katie's shaking her head. I can hear the marbles rolling. Um, no, that's not a talent God has given me. And one of the most important things you can do is acknowledge the talent that God has given you. He's given you a talent, not only so that you can earn a living, but he intends for you to use that talent to bless others. And I encourage you to take that talent, 
to bless others no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter who is in your face. A lot of times there are people who are not necessarily going to receive that talent gracefully. They get upset. They say mean things. They do mean things. And yet we are called, as God says, to preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage. Uh, all too often, we're way too quick to correct and rebuke, and we fail to encourage. Now, one of the things I love about this church is I think we do a pretty good job of the encourage part. I think we do a pretty good job of encouraging each other. We want to make sure we do that to people outside the church as well, even people who don't deserve to be encouraged. Um, I get challenged sometimes, and uh, people say, how can, you, how can you be nice to that person? How can you say nice things to that person? How can you say nice things about that person? And I like to tell them, if you look, you can always find something positive to say about everybody, and you should. That one thing that you say to that person may turn their world around, may turn a person who is having a terrible day into a good day for them, just with one simple word. A smile, a hug, a handshake. That's all it takes. And we're called to do that, all of us, not just the pastors, but all of us. Um, the, the part of this verse that really stands out to me, because I, I believe we're all seeing this, is where it says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a number of teachers to say what the itching ear wants to hear. You know, and it's, unfortunately, that's very true today. Um, we have people who are very fond of listening to things that the Bible does not say. Remember the last chapter in the Bible that I talked about? You know, adding to or taking away, you're sealing your fate. The Bible says that we are to um, follow after sound doctrine, not take up after false teachings. And, um, you know, all too often we have our own desires. We want that big house. We want that super fast car. We want a bank account with more zeros than we can count. That's not what we're called to do. God has you where he wants you because that's where he needs you. Sometimes we lament our situation. Why am I in the situation I'm in? Why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, what, what's going on? Well, God has us where he needs us. We don't understand why. If we try to understand why, we usually fail. Because God has the answers that we don't. One day we'll know, but by then we won't care. Because we'll be with him, it won't matter. Um, so, you know, just, uh, we want to be careful. And I, I'm thankful again that we have three pastors who preach God's word. Who don't preach what we want to hear but what we need to hear. They don't preach to us false things. They say to us God's word as it is written, not as we want to hear it. You know, unfortunately, I have that problem with my wife where she says something and that's not what I hear. And she's quite fond of that. One, I got to share something funny with you. One day, this was when Pastor Jeff first got here. One day, um, I get a phone call from my wife she says, you're not going to believe this. I just texted the pastor to ask him why he didn't take the trash out. <laughs> so in her phone, PJ and PJ are right next to each other. And so Pastor Jeff was like, uh, I think you want your husband. <laughs> so I personally enjoyed that. Yes, I forgot to take the trash out. And thank you, Pastor Jeff, for taking one for the team. Needless to say, she was mortified because we had just, I mean, we hadn't known Pastor Jeff and Anna that long, but uh, he didn't hold a grudge. And uh, he hasn't come over to take my trash out yet, but we'll have to work on that. Um, 
The, um, the rest of that uh, verse says, they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Um, you know, I don't want to hear the truth. I want to hear what I want to hear because what I want to hear is going to get me where I want to go. Not where God intends for me to go. Not where I'm intended to go. I want to go where I want to go and I don't want God to tell me where I want to go. It doesn't work that way. You know, as many times as we try to pull away, as many times as we try to steer our lives, God's plan always prevails. Um, it never fails. If you, if you try to steer away from God, what happens? He steers you right back. We all know the story of Jonah. Thank goodness none of us are in the belly of a fish right now, but, um, you know, I don't think... Uh, I don't think his plan was to be inside the belly of a fish because he didn't want to do what God had planned for him. Um, the, uh, the last part of this is, but you keep your head in all situations. Yeah, that doesn't happen most often, does it? <laughs> Way too often. Um, we had an expression in the military which was, Engage mouth before brain. Um, happens too often to all of us, myself included. Sometimes I speak before I think. And in most times, that winds up being a bad thing. A lot of times, if we, if we don't think before we start, then after we're done, <laughs> then we have to ask for forgiveness for what we've just done. So... The Bible says it clearly. Um, the one that's a challenge, the one that uh, is a call for all of us, uh, do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. That's a call to all of us to spread God's word. Now, for some of us, God did not give us the ability to speak in front of people. Like, this is not really where I choose to be. But I'm here because it's Pastor Appreciation Day, Pastor Appreciation Month, and because we usually throw Gil under the bus, and Gil said that uh, he's got tired of checking out to see if the uh, anti-rust treatment was actually working under the bus. He didn't actually say that. But we usually throw Gil under the bus. Anytime there's something that has to be done up front, we make Gil our official spokesman. Yeah, kind of that, will, will whoever's going to do it step forward and all of us step back. And <laughs> Gil didn't step back fast enough, so he's, he's the guy. So anyway, I'm up here today simply because I didn't want to leave it to Gil again. And we couldn't very well ask Pastor Keith to do it, because that would be kind of weird, honoring himself. Um, and uh, we know how much Keith Halsill likes to be up here. So I figured since he did the Rangers, I'd leave him off of that. So, and uh, my buddy Mark, yeah, he says that's not happening. So anyway, um, you know, I encourage you to step out. Sometimes we're not in a place where we feel like, is this really where God wants me? Listen. Sometimes you have to be quiet and listen to what God's telling you. Sometimes you have to shut out all the noise. You know, people talk about their prayer closet. I heard somebody say that one time, and somebody says, you have a closet you go into? No, it's not a closet. You go into a quiet space. You know, if, if you have a closet at home that you pray into, good for you. I don't have that much closet space, and most of the closets are filled with stuff, so there wouldn't be much room for somebody who's extra fluffy in a closet. So... Um, but we need to sp spend time just to listen to what God's asking us to do. Where does he want us to be? What does he want us to do? Answer that call. Don't have fear. Step out. If there's things going on in the church where Pastor Jeff is asking for volunteers, don't be afraid to volunteer. One of the things I'll tell you is one of the greatest pleasures you can get is serving others. And it, it's something that you don't ask for. It's something that you just get. 
Because when you're helping someone else, when you're doing something for someone else, we have ranger leaders, we have girls ministry leaders. I always want to say mission. That's I can't get over it. It's just, I'm old, what can I tell you? Um, you know, men's ministry, women's ministry. So there I want to say it's women of purpose, see? I'm stuck. But anyway, when you step out in those types of things, Sunday school teachers, all those things where you can serve other people, Yes, there's a little bit of work involved. You know, these people don't just show up and things magically happen. They usually have to prepare quite a bit. Um, but when you step out and do those things, you will receive a blessing way beyond any amount of effort you've put into it. Particularly when it's small kids. Kids have a great way of returning that blessing. But adults too. But for kids, the, uh, the joy and exuberance on their face a lot of times just can't beat anything that you, you put into it. They just return that so much. A hug, a smile, a laugh, all it takes. Um, but, uh, you know, as we take this time to recognize our pastors, um, we recognize that they sacrifice for us, not only in their professions, because they choose to be pastors. Being a pastor is not a... You know, here on Sunday, going on Monday type of job. It is a 24-7 job. Some people think the pastor only works on Sunday. <laughs> Not the case. Um, throughout the week, Pastor Luis, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Keith are called on by us to pray for people, to visit people who are sick, to counsel people. You know, we need someone to talk to, and these are the fellows that we choose to talk to. And they're great fellows to talk to because they are talking to us from the Bible, from the words of God, things that we need to hear, maybe that we don't necessarily want to hear, but things that we need to hear. And so I'm thankful that these three gentlemen have chosen to serve the community, to serve God, to serve us, this church. I mean, this is a, an awesome group of people. And I think we do a pretty good job of trying to uh, have each other's back, as they say. Um, but that leadership that we have at the top with the pastors is uh, something that we can be very appreciative of. And uh, I am uh, thankful to say that not only do I call these three gentlemen pastors, but they're my friends. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, pastor knocks on your door, quick, hide. Maybe he won't know we're home. <laughs> you know, hey, don't let the pastor see and you buy that bottle of vinegar. <laughs> Whatever, okay. Um, they tend to steer clear when they see the pastor. They get nervous. There's no reason to get nervous. These gentlemen are men just like the rest of us men. They're people just like the rest of us people. They know we're not perfect, um, but they're perfect for us. And we are thankful to have them. And, um, you know, as we go through the rest of this month, again, I encourage you to just, whatever talents you have. <laughs> I, t I told Sherry, Sherry was cutting my hair this week. If you like the do, see Sherry. Um, <laughs> Sherry was cutting my hair and I told her, I said, yeah, this is either going to be mildly amusing or a horrible train wreck. Either way, you're going to be entertained. <laughs> so I encouraged her to come and she's here today, so that's good. Um, but anyway, you know, I like to joke, I like to have fun. I think uh, the, the Bible encourages us to have fun. I mean, seriously, if he didn't want us to laugh, would he have made this? <laughs> Come on. I laugh at myself all the time. I don't take myself too serious. I laugh at the things, the stupid things that I do. And man, I do some stupid things. Many times. You know, I, I went to work one time with one brown shoe and one black shoe. Which, in my defense, they were both wingtips, the exact same style of shoe, just two different color shoes, and I didn't turn the light on because I didn't want to wake my wife up, and I go to work rather early. But I got to work, sitting at my desk, looked down, oh yeah, there it is. And I posted the picture on Facebook. Everybody was mildly amused. The sad part is, not long after that, I did the same thing. Only this time, it was a sneaker and a loafer. 
That one I got no excuse for. And you know what? Those were days where I needed a chuckle. Difficult days at work. And I laughed. People were like, are you going to go home and change? I'm like, oh, no. This is it. I'm, I'm walking around a sneaker and a loafer all day long. They were both black that day. At least the colors matched. I just didn't get the shoes right. So, you know, laugh whatever you get the chance for. Enjoy it. And uh, just look out for one another. And just uh, be, be the best that you can be. Use the talents that God has given you to bless others. And, you know, anything that, uh, anything that you can do to make someone's day brighter, I encourage you to do. If you can make someone laugh, great. If you can make someone cry, depending on how you do it, even better. And if they wet their pants, that's their own business. I didn't do that. So, I thank you. And I am going to turn it back over to Pastor Jeff. I've got to collect my trash. Paul's here all week. <laughs> tip, tip your waitresses before you leave tonight. Would you stand as we close this morning? You know, the Bible says laughter do is good like a merry medicine. It's great to be able to laugh. God gives us the ability to enjoy and to, to fellowship and to laugh with one another. And as Paul said, to not take yourself too seriously. And you know, it's also a privilege to be a part of such a great church. You know, a lot of nice things were said about us. Paul kept out all the other stuff, which because we get to meet every month, you know, and so we know all the, the other stuff. So, but it's also a privilege on our part as families, I'm sure Keith and Luis are the same thing. Not every church is as nice and as good as this one. Been in a lot. And it's a blessing for us, my family, for us to be a part of your love for us, your love for Keith and Luis. And we don't take that, take that lightly. We know what God has done for us. We know that God has done here. And we know what God is going to do in the future. And as Paul said, the most important thing you can do to bless us is to know God's word, to know it, and to live it. Because that's, that's why we're here. We're here to, to hopefully make each one of us better as Christians, to encourage us, to challenge us, to... What's the Bible say? Iron sharpens iron. We want each other to be pressed forward to doing what God wants us to do. And it's a privilege for us to be here. I'm going to ask Keith and Lynette, Anna, and Luis and Edith, come on down. And you stand in front of me. Okay. We are thankful to be able to be a part of this church. And we're thankful for the expressions of love you've all done for us, not only today, but throughout the weeks and months and years. And I'm gonna pray for this, this group right here because we need it. We all need God's blessing, don't we? Amen. Amen. And as, as Paul said, the women, well, you all know us, so the women really need the prayer, so. And we're gonna pray for you as a church because our joy is, is found in you and how God's working in your life. It's, it's one thing to, to go to a job or nothing ever changes and what you do has no effect on people. But when you come to a ministry that you can see what God is doing in other people, man, that's, that's a joy for us. And we're so thankful for that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of what you are doing in Dover. We thank you, Jesus, for putting each one of us here, both staff as well as each person sitting in a pew. You have called us here to accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish on the corner of Harmony Road and 74. Father, we pray your Holy Spirit would continue to fill this place every time we meet. 
that you would fill each person here every morning, every day. Allow us to experience the power of God, the presence of God every day. Let our walks be something that is celebrated by the people we come in contact with. Let people see something in us that's different, that is attractive to them, something that they can see Jesus in us. We thank you for the, the great time we had this morning, and we are appreciative of all your blessings in our life. And we as a staff, we're thankful for what you've done in this church to bless us. So, Father, we pray your return blessings upon those that are here. Allow them to leave really feeling encouraged by your spirit. And allow us to see each one of us in our daily walk, whether we struggle, whether it's an easy day, let us always sense the power and presence of Jesus to walk us through those situations. We thank you for making our lives different, making our lives better by becoming a part of your family. So Lord, I pray your blessings upon our staff here, Lord, and we pray your blessings upon those in the pews. Allow us to really sense your presence and your power every day. And Father, we commit ourselves to you. We are your servants. Fill us and use us as you will. And we thank you for it now, what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Awesome. Thank you very much. So appreciative. We are so thankful for that. Have a great day.